the real estate industry needs to catch up with what's happening outside the real estate industry in terms of data management and analytics, which is recording transactions in a way that are not only important for SEC reporting, but also for the myriad of tax reporting. Joining me today is Adam Cohen, Senior Vice President of Tax with Safehold. Adam, thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, you've been with several REITs in your career. What are the biggest issues confronting you as head of tax within all the different sectors that you've worked? I think the biggest issue is access to data and the organization of data. The real estate industry needs to catch up with what's happening outside the real estate industry in terms of data management and analytics, which is recording transactions in a way that are not only important for SEC reporting, but also for the myriad of tax reporting. What makes that challenging in the real estate industry is two factors. Most real estate companies run lean and mean. We don't have the layers of people that are necessary to implement these kinds of changes, and of course the budget to go with it. We also run very bespoke transactions. Our transactions each are always different. Each lease is different. Each lease has a nuance. So in speaking with many of my colleagues here at NAREIT at this conference, we all struggle with the same thing, which is we're working very manually in a very automated environment. And at the same time, we, have, we are starved for resources at the lower levels. So I'm not, only the, I'm, the, I'm not the only senior vice president of tax. My right hand is also a senior vice president. We're a very experienced group. There's no one in my group with less than 18 years of experience. Bringing in young people and trying to train them in a very complex world is almost impossible. So those are, those are, what we've, those are the types of challenges that we find um, broadly in the real estate and the REIT area is gaining that expertise and having the data so that we can use things like AI and other automation to eventually do things like REIT testing, computing taxable income, and computing the various adjustments that we have. LTIP is a broad term for long-term incentive plan. When the REIT world refers to LTIPs as opposed to option plans or restricted stock units, what are they generally referring to? So generally, they're referring to profits interests in the operating partnership as LTIPs. And some partnership folks, what's an LTIP? Because they think of it as profits interest. And from the REIT world, it somehow got branded as LTIP, which is long-term incentive plan, but that might include restricted stock units or options. Very few REITs use options because REIT growth is very long-term, very steady state. And so few people go into options where the difference in price between what they were issued at and what they might vest at over a two or three year period is not that great. So accordingly, restricted stock is more common. My colleagues share with me that it's about 50-50 and generally, the LTIP, that's the Operating Partnership Profits Interests, which could have favorable treatment, generally is the upper levels of the organization, the more sophisticated executives who can get K-1s and file in multiple states. Or the operating partnerships may use composite returns if those executives don't have income from other sources in those other states that the REIT might be doing business. And finally, do REITs use both LTIPs and restricted stock units as part of their long-term incentive plans typically? Typically they do. Um, as I mentioned before, the senior executives tend to be more on the LTIP side and the more junior employees and junior executives will tend to take restricted stock. Some REITs may offer an option, um, choosing one or the other, and a person can make that choice for themselves as to what they think is a better or longer term incentive for them.